Welcome to Noir Alley. I'm Eddie Muller here at Bar 355 in Oakland, California. And I'm serving up something special today in honor of TCM's 30th birthday. Cue the champagne. On April 14th, 1994 in Times Square, Ted Turner, Robert Osborne, and a handful of special guests flipped the switch on this network. Well, I've had the pleasure of hosting Noir Alley for the past seven years, but that wasn't the beginning of my on-air relationship with TCM. That beautiful friendship began in 2013, when I sat down in the famous red chair across from the original TCM host, the great Robert Osborne. I was invited on the channel for a night of, what else? Film Noir, to help promote my 11th annual Noir City Film Festival. Robert and I discussed four movies that night. And up next, we have arguably the best of the bunch from 1950, The Breaking Point. But not only do we have the movie, we also have the introduction Robert and I did. So I'll let the man himself take it from here. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Thanks so much for joining us for our night in Noir City, where we bring you a handful of not so well-known movies of the early 1950s. Back with us, as he has been all night, is Eddie Muller, the founder and president of the Film Noir Foundation, which is a nonprofit group which rescues and preserves film noir mysteries which are in serious need of restoration. Welcome back, Eddie. Thank you very much, Robert. Now, our next movie is a really good one with a stellar cast, great direction, based on a story by no less than Ernest Hemingway. It's The Breaking Point from 1950, starring John Garfield and Patricia Neal, directed by Michael Curtiz. Now, let's talk a little about this movie. Uh, I think that probably there's no film in the last 10 years that has uh, risen in my estimation more than this film. Right. I, I just think it's it's my favorite Michael Curtiz film. And yes, I am including Casablanca in that list. Uh, I just think it's absolutely brilliant all the way through. And um, it what people may not realize is that it's a remake of To Have and Have Not, right? Which if they've seen the Bogart and Bacall picture, this film is so incredibly different. It's actually more based on To Have and Have Not than the movie To Have and Have Not is. Absolutely, yes. Is. Based because, on the Hemingway novel, yeah, To Have and Have Not. Because it's yeah. really the, the first adaptation of the Hemingway novel as he wrote it. Correct. The story goes that Howard Hawks told Ernest Hemingway that he could make a good movie out of his worst book. And Hemingway, of course, said, oh, and <laughs> what would that be exactly? And he said, oh, that piece of junk to have and have not. And that was the genesis of his right. making the original film. But Ranald McDougall, the screenwriter, uh, was under contract at Warner Brothers, said in the late 40s, you know, we never actually shot to have and have not the book. We really haven't done it, so I'd like to take a crack at it. Right. And that was the genesis of this movie. And uh, he was the one who held out for Garfield mm -hmm. uh, to be in it. And when Garfield agreed to do it, he insisted that Michael Curtiz direct because I, I don't think Garfield was in a particularly good place in his career. No, not at this time. No, because that and, was not too long after he was with the House on American Activities correct. Committee, and his career was kind of over. Yeah. And he had actually made a Hemingway film called Under My Skin. Right, for that, Fox. Did, yes, for Fox, movie. yeah. Uh, but didn't make a lot of no. money. And he felt like, I need a good luck charm. Mm -hmm. And Michael Curtiz was the guy who discovered him uh, for all intents and purposes. And so they got this core group together. And I really think that this film defines Garfield as an actor and his screen persona in much the way that uh, In a Lonely Place uh, is sort of about Humphrey Bogart. It's mm -hmm. very self-revelatory. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes the core of this film so strong, is that Garfield relates so completely uh, to the character of Harry Morgan right. in the film. And and just everybody in the film is so good. Mm -hmm. The supporting cast is like... Phyllis Thaxter is wonderful in it. Wonder Hernandez is terrific in it. Yeah, yeah and you... Neil, it, Wallace Ford. Yes, and you do get the... Uh, those, all those great little Hemingway things that Tav and Have Not, the movie, didn't have. Like mm -hmm. he's a married man, you know, right. the, so the romance with kind of the Lauren Bacall, Patricia Neal character, you know, is totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just such an interesting movie. Exactly. Yes, here from Warner Brothers 1950 with a striking supporting performance from Phyllis Thaxter and the whole cast, here's The Breaking Point. <laughs> 